All right, just a quick look at some of the damage we're fixing on trigger. Um, the first thing we fixed was this part of the subframe, and you know that's one of the critical uh, load paths for all the suspension, braking, holding the engine. And we'd already gotten a new subframe in this car when we bought it, so you want to check for you know the critical load paths uh, or, or any of these pieces where it mounts the steering rack. So uh, this mount with one of the lower control arms was pretty banged up, and I'll show some before and after pics there. The tie rod, uh, the inner tie rod was bent, and you can see that here. The outer tie rod looks good, but we're going to replace it anyway. There's a bracket that goes here that is a reinforcing bracket, and it is pretty beat up. And it actually bent in and touched part of the chassis, and two of the brake lines here and there both got dinked. So we're going to replace brake lines back to a straight section to get rid of those kinks. There's a panel here that is still a plastic bracket that broke. I mean, obviously the carbon skirt, the fender itself, some of the fender mounting brackets are bent. We can straighten those up. Um, and, you know, that's kind of it. And the sway bar might be bent a little bit, but we'll check it. It's not critical. Uh, it looks like it bent in and touched the frame rail there, but the frame rail itself is straight. And we'd already replaced this portion of the frame horn when we bought the car. It was totally trash. But it's straight as an arrow all the way down. And... Uh, our tubular bumper beam that uh, Miles built, it bent right at the frame horn and didn't bend the frame horn itself, so that soaked up some energy. This used to come way out here like it does on this side. And it protects, you know, the front of the car and, and soaked up a lot of energy. So Our mounting panel for the splitter is pretty tore up, so Brad will remake that. Uh, the diffuser was really bent up pretty good right here. And I'll show the before picture, but Brad got it straightened out. There's still a little bit more work to do on the, the rear bracing, but otherwise we'll put this diffuser back on. The splitter itself, I mean, a big chunk of it broke off. Um, so we'll save some of the structure if we ever need to make another small one. But behind it is our big duck build splitter, and we're just going to put that on the car instead of remaking this for one more event. We're, we'll be in Max 1 class. I mean, clearly we lost two wheels, um, but that, that and some control arms, and we did break a spindle, but that's uh, all easily replaceable parts. So the rear diffuser mount um, got a little tweaked on one side. Uh, I think that's fairly repairable. This is all bolt-on structure. Um, this back here is supposed to be vertical, <laughs> so this panel got, got pushed back pretty good when the diffuser got knocked around. So we'll bend this panel. It's not super structural. We really just use it to mount the back of the diffuser. So we'll, we'll bend that back in place. But otherwise, the tub is in really good shape. It, this headlight got bonked, but it was already a repaired headlight that we had bought really cheaply and Brad had fixed and made some brackets to mount it. And somehow I ran across one of these on either eBay or Marketplace. It was in perfect shape. These are normally like three to six hundred dollars a side and I, I think I paid 75 bucks for this so we actually have a better headlight to go on than the one that was damaged likewise the front nose it took it took a beating and it was already broken when we bought it there on that one corner uh, and again I had when I bought this 2018 nose I ran across this six months later and picked it up for a hundred bucks so we already had a nose we had the headlight and we had this brand new extra panel uh, to replace this one here that's bent. So all in all, we, we got pretty lucky.